Do you struggle to trust God at times? Well then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to day three of Bible study to Christmas. If you're new here, my name's Mache and I make a variety of videos ranging from my life as a technical theater student to daily vlogs to creative content and newly some faith-based content as well. As you know, this week we are dealing with scripture that has to do with the prophecy of Jesus' birth. And if you haven't seen the previous videos, make sure to check those out. They will be linked either above or somewhere in the description. As always, feel free to comment any questions, critiques or observations in the comment section below. Just make sure to be kind to everyone in the comments because we're all learning. Warning, I am by no means a Bible expert. All the things that I will say in these videos are my own perceptions of what I'm reading as well as guidance from sources that I find which will also be linked below. I hope this could be a growing experience for both you and me. So without any further babbling, grab your Bible and let's go. In today's reading, we are going through Isaiah chapter 7. When Ahaz, son of Jotham, and grandson of Uziah, was king of Judah, king Rezin of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remalia, the king of Israel, set out to attack Jerusalem. However, they were unable to carry out their plan. The news had come to the royal court of Judah. Syria is allied with Israel against us. So the hearts of the king and his people trembled with fear like trees shaking in a storm. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, take your son Shear Yashub and go out to meet King Ahaz. You will find him at the end of the aqueduct that feeds water into the upper pool near the, near the road leading to the field where the cloth is washed. Tell him to stop worrying. Tell him to stop worrying. Tell him he doesn't need to fear the fierce anger of those two burnt out embers, King Rezin of Syria and Pekah son of Remalia. Yes, the kings of Syria and Israel are plotting against him, saying, we will attack Judah and capture it for ourselves. Then we will install the son of Tabil as Judah's king. But this is what the sovereign Lord says. This invasion will never happen, it will never take place. For Syria is no stronger than its capital, capital Damascus, and Damascus is no stronger than its king Rezin. As for Israel, within 65 years, it will be crushed and completely destroyed. Israel is no stronger than its capital Samaria, and Samaria is no stronger than its king Pekah, son of Ramalia. Unless your faith is firm, I cannot make you stand firm. Later, the Lord sent a message to King Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign of confirmation, Ahaz. Make it as difficult as you want, as high as heaven or as deep as the place of the dead. But the king refused. No, he said, I will not test the Lord like that. Then Isaiah said, Listen well, you royal family of David. Isn't it enough to exhaust human patience? Must you exhaust the patience of my God as well? All right then, the Lord himself will give you a s the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. By the time this child is old enough to choose what is right and reject what is wrong, he will be eating yogurt and honey. For before the child is that old, the lands of the two kings you fear so much will be deserted. Then the Lord will bring things on you, your nation and your family, unlike anything since Israel broke away from Judah. He will bring the king of Assyria upon you. In that day, the Lord will whistle for the army of the southern Egypt and for the army of Assyria. They will swarm around you like flies and bees. They will come in vast hordes and settle in fertile areas, and also in the desolate valleys, caves, and thorny places. In that day, the Lord will hire a razor from beyond the Euphrates River, the king of Assyria, and use it to shave off everything, your land, your crops, and your people. In that day, a farmer will be fortunate 
to have a cow or two sheep or goats left. Nevertheless, there will be enough milk for everyone because so few people will be left in the land. They will eat their fill of yogurt and honey. In that day, the lush vineyards, now worth a thousand pieces of silver, will become patches of briars and thorns. The entire land will become a vast expanse of briars and thorns, a hunting ground overrun by wildlife. No one will go to the fertile hillsides where the garden once grew, for briars and thorns will cover them. Cattle, sheep and goats will graze there. So let's first summarize what we just read. In this chapter, Isaiah is called to speak with the king of Judah, Ahaz. Ahaz fears this invasion from Syria and Israel, but Isaiah promises that the, inv the invasion won't happen, but rather that both nations will be destroyed. However, as Ahaz chooses to put his faith in a man rather than God, his land will also eventually be ruined. So let's dig a little deeper, starting from verse 1 to 2. So these verses provide a bit of context to the passage that we just read. But let's first talk a bit about who Ahaz was. So Ahaz was the king of Judah, but he was a wicked and ungodly leader. You can read more about him in the second book of Kings. So in verse 1, Ahaz, king resident of Syria, and Pekah, king of Israel, set out to attack Jerusalem. But the plan was kind of unsuccessful because um, it was later discovered that the king of Syria and Israel turned against Ahaz. How the tables have turned. <laughs> so next we're going through the section of verses 3 to 9. So verse 3 starts where Isaiah is called to speak with Ahaz and he must bring his son with him and he must tell Ahaz to stop worrying, to just be still and listen to the Lord because he obviously knows his own plan and God is in control. He doesn't care about other people's plans. And the last sentence in verse 9 is, is my favorite sentence in this entire passage. It says, unless your faith is firm, I cannot make you stand firm. Now, we are all guilty of not always trusting fully in God. We think that people are in control of our circumstances. We end up asking God for strength, but we actually don't have the faith that makes us strong. We don't always truly believe that God is in control. So after this first encounter with Ahaz, God sends another message to him in verses 10 to 16, challenging him. He asks Ahaz to request a sign from God to prove that he's real. Now, I don't know about you, but if God gave me that blatantly open opportunity, I would definitely use it. But Ahaz avoids trusting God with what seems to be quite a spiritual response. In verse 12, he says, I will not test the Lord like that. Playing on Matthew's verses 4 to 7, where he says, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. However, it's never actually testing God to do what he says. Instead, Ahaz used his wisdom to twist God's words for his own benefit. Because if God had have given him a sign, he would have had no justification not to believe. And this made me think. How many people do you know who are very intelligent and seem to be very wise who kind of twist God's words and use it as an excuse not to believe in him? Now what Ahaz did was twist God's words for his own benefit. However, in the long run, it didn't really benefit him. And in verse 17, because Ahaz chose to rather trust the Assyrian king who was deep into idolatry. God brings him this king who turns on him. How the tables have turned again. And the Assyrian king will make Ahaz's land barren and desolate. That's awkward. So, Ahaz would have been better just trusting God. So now that we've 
gone through this extract, what can we draw from it? While we may not want to admit it, many of us are like Ahaz. Sometimes even when the op opportunity is so blatantly obvious, we refuse to take signs from God because we want to carry on living by our old ways. However, we will never grow spiritually if we aren't willing to change. It is somehow so easy to rely on people for your happiness and safety in our lives in general, even when they prove to be untrustworthy time and time again. You see, people will turn against you due to greed, anger, and a variety of other things. But you are actually safe with God if you have faith in Him. And he can only give you so many signs, as he says, unless your faith is firm, I cannot make you stand firm. Thank you so much for sitting through this Bible study with me till the end. I really hope that it touched you or changed you in some way. Please subscribe to stay tuned for this series so that you can be notified every time the video is posted and do your little Bible study. If you have any questions, comments, queries, concerns, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Just make sure to keep them kind and respectful because we are all learning and I would love for it to be a safe environment. Also, make sure to comment your favorite points or verse from this video. Um, I would love to hear your perspectives. Have a beautiful and blessed day and I will see you for day four of Bible study to Christmas. Bye!